You know, 2025 has been a very interesting year for artificial intelligence, especially when it comes to local AI. Now at Micro Center, we have a wide selection of local AI hardware that is perfect, especially if you are a data scientist, if you're into anything big AI. But today we officially have the NVIDIA DGX Spark and we're gonna play with this guy a little bit over here. Now, Jacob, you've been messing around with the DGX Spark all week. Yeah. What do you think? First impressions? Oh, it is really cool. I think that about sums it up. I have been fine tuning some smaller models and I have been quantizing into an NVFP4 uh, quantization. Now, for the kids at home, what that means is basically you're taking some larger models and you're sort of shrinking them down and using NVFP4, which is hardware supported on this machine, as well as other Blackwell GPUs, you're getting a good amount of precision and accuracy in a much smaller package, I think is the best way to describe it. Yeah, yeah, normally. The hardware here, we talked about this a little bit in our previous video, but this is a 20 core ARM CPU, which is actually really interesting coming from NVIDIA. Yeah, it really, really is. So NVIDIA now is in the CPU game, so that's, <laughs> that's real interesting. Interesting. Uh, that's also paired off with their GB10, what they're calling their super chip, yeah. um, which is basically just a Blackwell GPU on a unified architecture with the ARM CPU and 128 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory. Yep. Which is pretty fast. Pretty fast. Now the memory bandwidth, you're looking at about what, 270 some odd gigabytes uh, per I second. I think so, yeah. Which, yes, that is a lot less than what you would get on a 5090 or even, what do we have in that machine over there? Uh, we have the RTX Pro 6000 in here. So both of those, that's about 1,700 gigabytes per second. It's a little bit more than that, but... GDDR7 is much faster than LPDDR5, which is why this yeah. isn't exactly an inference machine, but the magic is in that super chip. Right, because using the tensor cores on the GB10, you can use that with NVFP4, so you can make smaller models, you can fine tune your models, and we're gonna do a little bit of that here today. 10 gigabit ethernet also has that Connect X7 NIC, uh, yeah. smart NIC, right? Yeah. Using that, what can you do? You can connect two of these with a 200 gigabit per second uh, connection between them. Mm -hmm. So you can double up on your RAM and processing power. So that means you can get up to 256 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory. We've been talking about inference a little bit, right? What's inference? Well, that's basically you load up a model, you talk to it like you would on ChatGPT, yep. but it's all running locally. Not changing anything about the model, you're really just yeah. interacting with it. So inference, you did 70B, mm -hmm. right? You can inference some larger models depending on the quant. So I think you did like a 120B and even Nvidia yeah. says 200B. Yeah, the uh, I believe so. I didn't have any models that were 200B, uh, but 120B is the largest I did. So it's still pretty big. Yeah. Put two of these together, you can basically double that. So you're talking about inference with models up to 405 billion parameters, which is really impressive. It's really impressive. Again, inference, that's just one small little bit. And why don't we do a quick inference demo here? Yeah, absolutely. So you've got a command prompt open here. So yeah. why don't you type in Olama run and then this is all one word, llama 3.1 colon 70B and then space dash dash verbose. Now the verbose tag is going to give us some stats at the end of our, of our conversation. So we're gonna load those models up. So what we're doing is we're loading up llama 3.1B, mm -hmm. 70 billion parameters. At that bandwidth, it's taking a little bit longer to load that model than the uh, RTX Pro 6000 did but we're gonna go ahead and wait, there you are. While that's loading for a second, comparison that we're doing here, mm -hmm. DGX Spark versus Threadripper 9965WX, yeah. uh, that's paired off with the RTX Pro 6000. How much memory? 96 gigs of GDDR7, I believe, and then 256 gigs of DDR5, ECC. ECC memory, that's important. So compare that to the unified architecture over here. Magnitude's very different. Now, why are we doing this? Well, we just wanna show what inference looks like on both of these machines. You got cosmic keystrokes right over here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to copy and paste the same exact prompt and then just right click, paste, hit enter. Let's make sure we have the same ones. Okay, there we go. Okay, so. What we're doing here is basically a speed sort of benchmark, right? Yeah. And what we're looking for is tokens per second. Yeah. Uh, tokens, simple way of saying, that's basically the words that are generated from the large language model. You yep. can see here. This ooh, is you can hear here. You hear the fans? <laughs> yeah. This is worrying up quite a bit, but also it is speeding right through. Yeah. Meanwhile, over here, it's a little bit slower. So what's going on under the hood? This is all pulling from the GDDR7 that's on the uh, GPU. Mm. So it is going to be 
quite a bit faster than the LPDDR5 that's on this device. They're both doing the same thing. And you can see GPU utilization about 95% here. Yeah. 97 gigabytes of our unified memory of the 128 gigabytes. Yeah. When we talk about inference is interacting with your models and clearly, looks like this guy's already done. Yeah. Uh, we had an eval rate of 28.29 tokens per second. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. For 70B, that, yeah, that's pretty good. And we're gonna let this guy finish up. Now, why are we doing this test? Does this make the DGX Spark look bad? Not exactly, because again, this is not strictly an inference machine, and that's interacting with the models. Now, yes, when you're fine tuning or quantitizing your models, you're still gonna interact with them on here. Orders of magnitude of difference between the performance, but also in terms of power consumption. And price. $4,000 gets you a DGX Spark. Meanwhile, the RTX Pro 6000 that runs for- The GPU alone, 9,000. About $9,000. Paired off with the Threadripper, the motherboard, the RAM, yeah. and everything else that supports that system. So that's about 2X the price. Yeah. Or more. Yeah. This is one system for $4,000 that you can get right out of the box. It has Linux installed. Mm -hmm. This is basically a flavor of what? Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu Linux, it's one of the main distributions. Uh, this is DGX OS. NVIDIA made this distro specifically for the Spark. Got it. Okay. And there's a couple of quirks because this is an ARM CPU. So, for instance, I like using LM Studio. It has a GUI. It's very simple for me to use. Uh, as of today, no compatibility with this ARM CPU. Yeah, they've got ARM for both Windows and Mac, but they haven't quite gotten to Linux. And that's probably because just there aren't a lot of use cases for ARM with Linux yet. Uh, I haven't used any other ARM Linux devices other than like a Raspberry Pi, and this is a completely different beast. And it's only slightly bigger. Too. Yeah, yeah. Power consumption here is gonna be a lot bigger. I think we when we built that system, it was what, a 2,500 watt power supply? Yeah, because we had two 5090s in it initially. Right. Uh, so we needed a little bit of juice. And that's the Max-Q variant of the RTX Pro 6000. So that's running on 300 watts. Yeah. Well, the power brick that comes with the DGX Spark, uh, that says about 270 watts on the power brick. And we're not really checking power consumption right now, but you have a power budget of about 300 watts, which I think is also part of the appeal. This is a simple desktop unit that you can use to start quantitizing and fine tuning your models and some inference, which we still have running over here. If you're a developer, this is definitely looking like an attractive way to start quantizing and fine tuning your own models. This finished up over here, we're at 4.21 tokens per second versus our 28.29. So obviously that's a pretty big difference in terms of performance. If you're buying a machine for using inference, this probably isn't for you, but this is definitely for developers looking to get into fine tuning and quantizing their own models. So do you wanna talk about that a little bit? So NVIDIA, they give you the framework that you need to start fine tuning as well as quantitizing with NVFP4 right out the box. So that comes with this OS. Basically, they take you right to the webpage. I think it's like NVIDIA Builds. We'll have the link in the we'll description the link, below. Yeah. Um, but it gives you all of the documentation that you need to follow along so you can start that process. And Jacob has been working on that. So talk about that a little bit. The website wasn't quite up yet when we were starting to do this. So they gave us a private GitLab. So I just copied all those text files. Let me just grab one of those. So there's a bunch of prerequisites here that you should do the first time you've done this, but I have already done this, so we should be all right. Uh, let's go ahead and run this docker run command. And that's one of the nice things that they did. They had docker pre-installed on this. And for those who don't know, docker is kind of a, a way to group different processes together to make sure that you have everything that you need. So let's do docker run. So that is making sure that we had all the prerequisites. Now, NVIDIA SMI not quite working properly yet. That's one of the quirks with getting started on ARM. It's just new and there's gonna be little quirks. We have 3.7 terabytes left. And that's another thing to mention, this comes with four terabytes of space. So you have lots of room for data sets and models that you can start using. Here's our run command. Uh, this is defining different volumes, different environment variables. We don't need to get into all that today, but if we hit enter, it is going to go out, get and build the dependencies that it needs. I love seeing text fly that fast across the screen. So it's downloading all the dependencies that it needs, and then it's going to get started with actually quantizing the model. Uh, so this is uninstalling something that it doesn't need so it can install a newer version, and it's gonna keep going through stuff like that. This one looks like it's gonna take a minute. And so this is the quantization for NVFP4, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the big deal with NVFP4, we talked about it before a little bit, but what you're doing is you're taking 
uh, think of it in terms of like images. You're taking a big JPEG, kind of saving it to a smaller JPEG, right? Yeah. It's more compressed. You're going to lose some information, but overall, the image is still there. Yeah. Similar over here, you're basically taking these larger models and you're making a much smaller version, which makes them easier to run on Blackwell devices. Yeah, Blackwell devices and, you know, any hardware that isn't as beefy as the machine that we have over there. Mm -hmm. Now, that's going to be really good for deployment on this machine, and maybe we can even try the model out after. So it's loading different weights, loading weights concurrently, and bam, we done did it. DeepSeek AI forward slash DeepSeek R1 distill Llama 8B. GPU memory used, 18.9 gigabytes, uh, and then generated outputs cabinet maker then so so the input for this what for the last test that it did was cabinet maker and then the model made everything else up that's it we just quantized down to nvfp4 from a deep seek r1 distillation of llama 8b it's very cool it even shows out all the different tokens here yeah Basically, the way NVFP4 works, it's dealing with much smaller 4-bit numbers, and there's two smart scaling tricks that it's using, so you're still capturing the most important detail. So on one level, it's grouping values in tiny blocks of like 16, and it gives each block its own FP8 scale. Uh, but then it's also applying a second global FP32 scale for the whole tensor. So the idea is that you're using two different scales to work together to give you that accuracy while still kind of compressing it down. Now from an FP16, it's about 3.5 times smaller. And from an FP8, it's 1.8 times smaller. Uh, but this is how you're able to get one petaflop of performance with this hardware, is leveraging that NVFP4. Yeah. It's pretty cool stuff. This process, how long did this take roughly? You did a test before. It took about two and a half minutes, and I didn't include the first time I ran it, it went out to the internet and started downloading a lot of these things that I needed right. to get started. Our internet here in the studio is a little bit anemic, and I think that would be unfair to the device itself. So uh, once I got everything downloaded, I ran it again, and it was about two and a half minutes, really fast. And this is just a demo. This is the demo that NVIDIA provides you with, uh, but at least it kind of gives you an idea of what you can expect in terms of speed and performance when you start using the quantization on this. Now, what about fine tuning? Fine tuning takes a little bit longer. Uh, I did do that using what's known as Llama Factory. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an open source software that's publicly available on GitHub, and we used one of their examples that was suggested to us from NVIDIA. Uh, and that took about 36 minutes to fine tune an 8B model. And that's just for the sample data set that they provide you with, but I think they say, you know, that process can take several hours. Oh yeah. Um, but again, what's interesting about that is, let's say with a fine tune model, right, the ability to fine tune your own model, we could take our model of choice, mm -hmm. and even just like an 8B would be totally fine. Yeah. Um, we can fine tune it on whatever we want. Yeah. So for instance, if we wanted to do the history of Micro Center, yeah. Or if you wanted to do like um, Arduino like code, you know, train it on a bunch of art like Arduino code to help you as like a code helper. Mm -hmm. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I would really like to. We used to have a, a whole magazine. I would like to take all of those magazines and mm. pl slowly put them into a database so we could fine tune a model just on everything we've ever put out. Right. So then everything Micro Center history wise, like, uh, you know, what was going on at Micro Center in the fall of 1983? Yeah. And I could just pull it up like right <laughs> away. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna have to scan everything, get PDFs, like feed them all into the thing. Um, can you walk us through the process of setting up the fine tuning? Got a lot of prerequisites that I've already done. So we're gonna launch PyTorch with this Docker run command, so. All right, now we're actually running inside of the Docker uh, container. So you'll notice that we're root at, and then this is the Docker container ID, forward slash workspace. Clone this repository for Llama Factory, and then go into that folder. Now, we already did that, so it's saying that that, uh, that file path already exists and it's not empty, and then it did go right into that. So it's CD Llama Factory, right? And then pip install. Pip is an installation method using Python. So we're going to pip install E. We're installing the build dependencies. So that's all the dependencies done. Let's go ahead and, so we're going to verify that PyTorch is pre-installed with CUDA support, which is very important. It is true, which is good. And then this is just us. We're gonna take a look at the parameters that are set out in this example. So we're going to cat this file. 
And that is, okay, we got model, model name or path, meta llama, meta llama 8B instruct. Uh, trust remote code is good. This, this is the data set uh, that we're going to pull. Then cutoff limb, max samples is a thousand. This all looks good to me. So we are going to launch fine tuning. When you paste in your token, you're not gonna see anything. That's totally fine and normal. It's like using a password inside of Linux. So it's just trying to keep that safe for you. So I'm going to right click, paste in our token, hit enter, say, yes, I do wanna use that Git credential. And now it should start the fine tuning process. So all in all, the DGX Spark is a really budget friendly development machine. Yes, right. absolutely. Fine tuning, quantization, the processes that they give you uh, definitely help a lot, at least to get started, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like before this, I honestly hadn't ever quantized anything or fine tuned a model. Uh, that always seemed out of reach, but with the instructions that they gave, it was very easy to get started. And you can kind of change those instructions pretty easily to fine tune your own stuff with your own data sets. We're definitely gonna mess around with that. Oh yeah. We're, we're gonna have a lot of follow-up content on the DGX Spark. I think the biggest thing for the DGX Spark is the price point and what you're getting at that price point. Yeah. If you are operating in the cloud, well, that's gonna get pretty expensive really fast if you're yeah. looking to deploy something and test. Meanwhile, you can do that locally here before you get a cloud implementation kind of down the line, oh. right? And basically, the cost savings for a device like this up front, you know, obviously, yeah, $4,000, that's no small amount of money. But if you look at basically a whole year of compute on the cloud versus locally, especially if you're just in the testing phase. It gets quite expensive right. working in the cloud. So this helps you out, especially if you get two of these units together, you can work with both of these and you can leverage all that. And we'll talk about putting two DGX Sparks together in a future video, because we're gonna have the cables and everything at your local micro center set up for that, so we can help you out with that. And make sure you stay tuned, because we are gonna have a sit-down interview with some people at NVIDIA to talk about the DGX Spark, and we're gonna go on a deep dive on the hardware, the software, and everything that went into making this a pretty cool device. But the big takeaway is that the performance that you get right out of the box for fine tuning, quantization, and inference with some models is still pretty good. Obviously we went for an extreme case and an yeah. extreme comparison, yeah. but again, what you're getting here with all the other tool sets, really impressive. I think so too. So make sure you stop by your local micro center to check out the DGX Spark. And if you don't have a micro center near you, then make sure you comment hashtag I want a micro center near me. Thank <laughs> you.